Georgia summers are hot. And when it gets hot, people head up to the lake to relax and have a good time. That's a good thing, but often in the summer we see an influx of calls for people about boating accidents. People who've been hurt in a boating accident or who have a loved one who's been hurt in a boating accident. So today I thought we'd take a minute and talk about that. We'll go through how boating accidents occur, the kinds of boats that can be involved, who's liable or who's responsible in a boating accident, and why they occur. So first, as to how injuries happen in boating accidents, so one of the most common ones, and obvious ones really, is a collision. Um, this can be because someone's going too fast, somebody's not paying attention, or any combination of those things. Another one that we sometimes see are propeller injuries. And these can be really bad. If someone gets tangled up with the propeller of an operating boat, that's obviously a really bad thing. And that can happen when someone who's driving the boat isn't paying close enough attention and backs over someone in the water. The injuries can be really hard um, on the people who sustain them. Here's an example. This is an x-ray from one of our clients who was caught up in a boat propeller. And you can see what happened. The propeller turned her tibia and fibia in something that looks like a bundle of sticks from a beaver dam. I mean, just tore her apart. Another way that these happen is ejections. Um, sometimes someone flies out of the boat, either because of a defect in the boat, like the way the boat was designed. Perhaps it was designed in a way that was unstable um, when the boat turned or involves a lake and people get thrown out. Or maybe the driver just isn't paying attention or is driving too fast. If someone gets thrown out of the boat, they can be hurt when they land in the water, when they land in the water and then another boat hits them, or when they land on a hard object like a dock or dry land. Um, another way these things can happen is with skiers or tubers. You can imagine how this happens. If there's a skier or a tuber behind the boat and someone isn't paying close enough attention, they can collide with that person and the results obviously are no good. Uh, the types of boats that we see. The first I'll start with is the old pontoon boat. They're not fast, but they're popular, and a lot of times people on pontoon boats get very relaxed, sometimes with substances or, or without, and so you can see propeller type injuries um, on pontoon boats. We also see injuries sometimes, uh, excuse me, in runabouts. These are sort of your basic boats, some people call them speed boats, and when they're unstable people can get thrown out and you can have those ejection injuries that we talked about earlier. And then of course you have problems on uh, jet skis. If a jet ski hits something there's obviously no occupant protection, there's nothing to protect the rider most of the time, so collisions with jet skis tend to produce injuries. Uh, often, a lot of times, they can be driven too fast and people get ejected off the back of a jet ski, maybe into a hard object or something like that. In terms of who is responsible, often it's a very obvious um, answer, the boat driver. If the boat driver was negligent, if the boat driver was drinking or was high, or something like that, or maybe going too fast or out of curve, and the driver can be responsible. Also, the owner of the boat. Georgia law is written in such a way where if an owner knowingly lends a boat to a family member or someone like that who doesn't operate the boat safely, then the owner can be held responsible for that. And the reason for that rule is to make boat owners careful about who they lend their boats to and under what circumstances they lend out their boats. Another entity that can be uh, responsible for a boating accident injury is a boat rental company.
There are a lot of boat rental companies um, on Georgia lakes, like Lake Lanier and Lake Alatoona both have a bunch of them. They can look all kinds of different ways. Um, here's a picture of one rental boat in a case that we're involved in. Um, people rent them and sometimes the drivers don't have a real good idea of what they're doing. So, and sometimes the boat rental company isn't very careful about who they let drive these big boats. So people can get hurt. When a rental company is involved, a lot of times it takes some good lawyering, for lack of a better word, to hold that company responsible. Because you can imagine when the rental company rents the boat, they have the renter sign on that contract with all the, that little fine print that most people don't ever read. Well, in order to hold the rental company responsible, you have to be able usually to get around um, that contract, which is something we have a little bit of experience with. And last, we'll talk about why uh, boating accidents happen. A lot of times, it's simple carelessness. And the law refers to carelessness with a term you've probably heard before, and that term is negligence. When someone isn't being careful, isn't taking the precautions they should, we say they're being negligent, or negligence has occurred. And that's the cause of a lot of boating accidents. The other, you can probably guess, we kind of hinted at it earlier, and that's um, alcohol and drugs. Um, let's see, well, I wrote DUI, but I should really write BUI, boating under the influence, marijuana or other drugs. That's not legal, that's not safe, and every year in Georgia, it causes a lot of boating injuries.